These memcache servers on the internet are allowing attackers to carry out the biggest denial of service attacks we've ever seen. So Mike, we saw some ridiculous DDoS attacks over the weekend, uh, and it's actually a, a relatively new attack vector. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yes, I, I think um, our um, colleagues on an, uh, an earlier Threat Track episode talked about some traffic uh, during internet weather, uh, memcache servers, lots of traffic, right? And I think what, what happened is we've entered into a new era in DDoS. Uh, I remember the beginning when a couple gigabits per second was a DDoS attack and you got excited and we had scrubbers and we scrubbed them out, but we are now in terabits per second of DDoS attacks. The amplification factor on this is way off the charts, larger than anything else, which means attackers could send a small amount of data, get a large response, and then direct that towards their targets. The other thing to think about is all the old ways of DDoS attacking did not go away. We're just putting a new way on top using memcache servers that are internet connected, um, think of them as being very fast. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, memory, right? right. And the whole goal of these servers is to deliver content very quickly. So great uh, thing to misuse to mm -hmm. generate a lot of traffic and to target someone. Memcache servers that are in a poorly configured state, they have a, a port, the UGP port. Unfortunately, that port allows uh, any unsolicited packet to come through and request a large chunk of information, which unfortunately could be used in a reflective DDoS attack. It doesn't require all the work that some of the older attacks did, where you had to compromise a whole bunch of machines all over the place. You find these uh, poorly protected default configuration servers, and they're yours to use mm -hmm. to carry out these very large scales. These are reflective denial of service attacks in a UDP protocol, so yeah. See, exactly, UDP Same protocol. Same story, but bigger amplification is what I hear. Bigger, yeah, 50 to a couple hundred times. So we've seen kind of this, um, the discovery of new ways to amplify, right? Mm -hmm. And DNS was really big for a while. And then somebody wrote a paper on TFTP servers have bigger amplification. Then we saw actually use of TFTP servers, mm -hmm. network time servers, and this is now the, probably better than all of those that were discovered along the path. Memcache servers, wow, has kind of been the, mm -hmm. the reaction on both sides, protecting against them and people wanting to use them to amplify very large attacks. Um, our own uh, analysts seeing traffic, you know, taking advantage of that port, it's one, one, two, one, one. Yep. They, like noticed it and they actually kind of predicted and said, hey, everybody watch out, there's something going on here. And then we've seen that exact thing happen. So they were very upfront. They knew more was to come and more has come. Mm -hmm. And as we look forward from today, we can expect see even bigger more, attacks, yeah. past one terabit and then one point five, one, you know, two terabit, we know that's going to be the case. And the limiting factor is just the number of available memcache D servers that are on the internet and the pipes to them? If they're configured with, you know, the ability to be kind of wide open UDP traffic to take your pick target address. All right. The biggest uh, challenge here is for people who actually run these memcache servers to do a better job protecting them. US CERT actually has an advisory where they list out all the different protocols you can do um, reflection against, and they have the amplification factor in there. So <laughs> something to check out. It's like a, it's almost like a guide to the amplification factor I was thinking about that. That's the kind of information that could be used in two different ways. Yes. This is your checklist to make sure you don't have it on the internet. And this is your checklist for scanning, and they happen to be the same document. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Well, I think it's important for us, the good guys, to kind of know and be able to understand like what are all of the things that should be protected. So that's the lesson out of this is if you're an admin and you happen to have a server running memcached, do you make sure it's not internet facing? Yes, and make sure it's configured correctly if it is internet facing. In general, I think the best defense against this is to educate people who are admins. You know, if you're running one of these servers, make sure it's not on the internet. And if it is, if there's a way to lock it down, do that. So if you're running any kind of memcache server out there and you notice maybe it's been running a little bit slowly, it might be because it's been participating in a DDoS attack. And the best thing you can do to help everybody on the internet is to make sure you configure it securely.